Say to God, come on, put those hands together. Let's praise him today. Let's praise him. Yes, it's just something about Sunday morning. Well, said I can't on, wait. I can't All wait to Sunday morning. To Sunday morning. To sing and shout. To sing and shout. And praise the Lord. Praise well, the Lord. Well, good tonight. To Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Hey, morning. Gather together. Gather church together. in one accord. Hey, said it's something to find. Out of Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Said it makes me happy. Happy deep inside. Well, I take God my presence, every one of my chains. I give it to the Lord, and I leave Him there. Yes, it is something about, said it's something about that day. Yeah, said it's gotta be the Lord's day. Jesus said he'll make a way out of no way. Wow, I don't worry about my bills. Sunday morning, no bill collectors knocking at my door. Cause if they come on Sunday morning, I'll be at church praising the Lord with my mind on Jesus. On Sunday morning, Everything gonna be alright. I don't worry about my bills and wait. Cause I know that the Lord has already made a way. There's something about that day. That it's gonna be the Lord. I got one more thing I want to tell you. Y'all ain't gonna believe this now. Listen, some folks don't go to church on Sunday morning. Some stay at home. Some even go fishing. Oh, they don't know. On Sunday morning, they just don't know. Just what they're missing. She's a Thank you. 
Good morning, world, and Cloverland. I want to say thank you for joining us on the day. We're excited that you stopped by to uh, join us on this morning to worship with us, our great God in the heavens, as we worship, come together collectively, uh, virtually, wherever you are. We want to say we're, we're glad you stopped by and worshiping with us here at the Cloverland Church of Christ. If you're a visitor, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on social media, uh, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. We would love to uh, have you follow us and be a part of our lives as well as we'll be a part of yours. I want to come briefly with some quick announcements. Uh, we'll have next week, uh, uh, the following week on Mother's Day, we're going to uh, have a parking lot uh, worship. Everything will still be live. You can still watch us. But we encourage you, if you're in the Houston area, to come and worship with us in our parking lot on Mother's Day. We would, we would love to see you and your family and, and to fellowship and worship with you on that Sunday at 945 in the parking lot at the Tr Cloverland Church of Christ. That's 11903 Scott Street, Houston, Texas 77047. And so, yes, we're excited. Uh, we're going to have a wonderful time again on Mother's Day in the parking lot at the building. And so we encourage you to join us if you can. Uh, again, to our members, we want to say we're continuing to pray with you, we're, uh, praying for you, rather, uh, as, uh, as uh, we hope and pray that you are praying for us. And so we want to let you know that we love you. We, uh, we encourage uh, uh, what God is doing here at Cloverland, and we just ask that you continue to bless, uh, pray for the, its members and, uh, 
its ministers, uh, and its leaders. Amen, amen. And so I'm excited about today's worship, and I hope you are as well. So let's sit down and let's get, get together as a family, and, uh, and let's, let's go into worship together with our, uh, as we worship our God in spirit and in truth. Pray with me if you don't mind. Dear Father God, thank you for this morning. Thank you again for watching over us and keeping us. Thank you, Father, for uh, just allowing us to be here. And uh, we're grateful of this opportunity again to, to see this day and to uh, worship and to come together, whether we are at, at home or at work or in our cars or uh, virtually as we watch together and as we worship you. Uh, God, we just pray that uh, we open our hearts and minds today and uh, uh, that you be glorified and that the body of Christ be uh, edified and uh, and that we can uh, apply this message to our hearts and minds. And so, Father, just continue to be with our world and uh, what's, what's currently uh, going on and uh, here currently in America, but uh, uh, with the virus. And uh, we just pray that uh, these vaccines are working and uh, that we can uh, uh, come back to some normality. Uh, we just pray that uh, we can uh, uh, worship you again uh, one of these days. And so we're planning to open the building in June, uh, the first Sunday. So God, just be with us. Crown us with the wisdom and knowledge uh, to uh, do this safely. And uh, we, we, we're currently not uh, there yet. We, we're still trying to understand what's going on. And so we're we're babes, we're ignorant at this, and so just, just guide us, oh God, here at the Cloverland Church of Christ. Father, we love you, we thank you, we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us. Now we'll go to, to uh, two congregational songs, and we'll come back with Mission Moment.
There's a call comes ringing o'er the restless waves. Send the light, send the light, send the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save. Send the light, send the light, send the light. We will spread, we will spread the everlasting light. enjoy those songs amen i did i don't know about you but i i just love the part of singing uh in in, in worship i love that that's a part of that's another ministry it, it ministers to to my heart and so i i just love to close my eyes clover land and visit us and listen to the words those beautiful words uh that that comes and flows from the heart and I hope you do as well. And so, uh, you know, the Bible encourages us to, to, sit, to make melodies and sing with the fruit of our lips to, to minister to one another uh, in, in Scripture. And so I, I encourage you and I hope you're doing that uh, uh, while you're worshiping with us today. Uh, now we're going to mission moment. Uh, we're continuing to uh, strive to be the church Christ wants us to be. Uh, he had commanded all his disciples, church, uh, to, to go out and teach and, and make disciples, baptizing uh, believers in the, in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And so we want to do that here at Cloverland. And I encourage all of our members here at Cloverland to, 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 to gravitate to that type of mindset, to gravitate to that type of heart. And so we encourage you. Uh, uh, and that's what we've been trying to do and striving to do here at Cloverland. And so we just beg thee, O oh God, that you continue to bless us with that and that you continue to crown us uh, with that wisdom uh, to go out and spread the gospel. But not only that, to spread your love and to show our community that we care for the outcast, for the poor and so and et cetera. And so. Uh, I want to say this quick briefly to our members. Uh, we want to remind you of the bags we have here at the building. Uh, we encourage you uh, to pick them up on uh, Saturdays when you come and get your communion uh, and when you drop off your giving uh, to, to pick up a couple of bags while you're in here in the building and to take with you. And when you see poor, you could, you know, you could add, you can add, add on to the bags. We got some, some materials and, uh, some goods that's inside of those bags but you can add on some some snacks and some you know throw a couple of change or, and dollars in there and and give them to the poor or, or some and, you know some scriptures and some panels whatever an encouraging scripture uh and uh, a contact number even uh so where they can uh get in touch with you and so you can pray for those people uh etc you know and so we just encourage that we're excited we want to uh let our members know to continue to pray for malawi africa as those goods that that we sent over there uh, arrive to them safely Sing to me, O Lord. 
So let's pray for, at this time for mission moment. Mission, God, thank you for the missions and the, the purpose of it. And we know and now understand the purpose of evangelizing the world. Uh, this is the only way that the world can get your message. If your, if your people uh, will go out and, uh, and share the good news and how Christ has been good to us. And so we want to do that here in Cloverland. Continue to bless our resources, God. Continue to bless our minds, our strength. Give us endurance. Give us the capability to go out to uh, do certain things and ministries and uh, 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 programs and events here at the com in our community. And, and, and even amongst our members, allow us to be always uh, giving and not uh, wanting to receive. And so we want to be that church here at Cloverland. Help us as we strive to do better on that part. And, and even in this ministry, uh, as it, it, it's a new ministry that we've implemented this year. And so we just ask your continued uh, blessing, your continual increase uh, as we uh, do these things and uh, try to bless each and every one of us that come in contact with, with one another. Father, we love you. We thank you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, thank you for being a part of our worship. Now we'll go into uh, uh, scripture reading. If you don't mind, grab your Bibles and uh, we'll go to 1 Samuel chapter 20 and verse 3. 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 3. And uh, <clears throat> I'll be reading that out of the King James Version of the Bible. 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 3. Amen. All right. And uh, when you get there, say amen. I'm excited, Cloverland, about what's going to take place today. And I hope you ought to do are too, because God's word is going to be spoken on this morning. The Bible says, but David said, your father uh, certainly knows that you have come to look favorably on me. And he said, Jonathan must not know of this or else he will be grieved. And David also swore as surely as the Lord lives. And as you yourself live, there is but a step between me and death. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and doers of God's word on this morning. Our lesson of this morning is entitled, uh, Seconds, Two Seconds After Death. Two Seconds After Death. Cloverland, as we transition into meditation and prayer, we all have to die. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, we are, there's a, it's, it's a point of a man to die and then the judgment. And so there, no one in this world, no one who's watching us on this morning will escape death. And so I encourage you to sit down, share the message, 
comment and leave uh, comments. Uh, we would love to your interaction on the day. Uh, as you watch us, as we encourage one another, as we see how what God says about death and what happens after death. And so uh, we want to make we want to make sure, though, when we die, that we are in that number. And so that's what I want to encourage us on today. So pray, God, that we continue to grow spiritually, uh, that we continue to grow in our Christian walk, that we can mature in our faith uh, and that we can encourage those around us to do the to do, to do the same thing. So let us meditate and pray. Amen. Thank you, Father God, again, as we come together to worship thee uh, on this Sunday morning. Father, we are grateful of this week and what we've probably experienced, uh, whether it had been bad or good. We all can learn from both and we can continue to learn on this side of life to continue to grow in you and, uh, and be who you want us to be. So God, just could crown us and continue to bless us in all that we do. Continue to uh, let the light shine uh, in us and through us, oh God. And uh, Father, we uh, pray that uh, uh, what we do today, uh, what we've done thus far, has been pleasing and acceptable unto thee. So Father, be with your manservant as I come forth with your word, as I bring forth it to your children. Uh, that everything I say and do uh, be uh, truthfully, true in truth, and that uh, it be accurate, and that uh, it be understanding for the least of hearers, so they can apply to their everyday life. Uh, Father, we, we just again want to be the church you called us to be. So help us here at Cloverland. Help those visitors who are watching us, and for those who are uh, just making those decisions on where they want to be. We want to let those people who who watching, who's looking for a church home that we are the place that they can be and they can grow in you uh, and strive to, to, to be the disciples you've called us all to be. So help us, oh God, right now, in the midst of all our troubles, all our trials, and all our tribulations. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Take God's word. If you're just now joining us, for those who, are, who have been with us, would you please and turn to the Old Testament text. Amen. And I want you to turn with me, if you don't mind, to, to 1 Samuel chapter 20 and we're going to look but at a portion of, of a verse of, of verse 3 rather uh, I read it just uh, a few moments ago in 1st Samuel chapter 20 and the last part of, of verse 3 now I want you to take your pen and or your pencil rather if you don't have one hurry up and go and run I'll wait on you now but, <laughs> but as I read that church uh, if you have your own Bible or if you have your phone out I would suggest that you underline or you highlight it and personalize it in your mind and in your life. And look what the Bible says. It says this, there is but a step between me and death. And it depends on the translation. And I wonder, Cloverland, if, if you realize that as true, death is only uh, a faint, faint heartbeat away. Do you hear it? Do you hear your heartbeat? Be quiet. Can you hear your heartbeat? It's only a heartbeat, only a step, church. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hand right there on your heart. As you feel your, your pulse on your wrist and as you feel the heartbeat of your, of, your, uh, of your heart pumping through your chest, do you feel that little heartbeat? That, that's right, that, 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 that's all there is between, as you feel that, is between you and death. It's only a step. How long, church, does it take to, to, to make a step. As I made this step, how, how, how quick was that step? Two seconds, if, if, even if it may have been one. Two seconds after death. That's our lesson today. Cloverland, we, we've lost some good members over the past two years. We've been out of the, out of the church. Due to COVID, we've lost some, some great uh, fighters uh, uh, in the Lord, uh, Cloverland, and Sister Smithers, uh, Sister Moore, Sister Walker, uh, Brother Polidor, and you know, some of them I knew was sick uh, church, but, but, the, but the others I didn't, and, and their lives just had been snuffed out from them. Some of them I would see or talk to, and, and a couple of days later, they'll just, they'll just be, be gone. As James said, we're not but vapors of smoke. There is a, but a step, church is what I'm trying to tell you, between me and death. Somebody said that every preacher ought to preach as a dying man would preach to dying men. This may be the last sermon, Cloverland, that I ever preach. And it may be the last one that you will ever hear on this earth today. 
there is but a step between me and death. The most amazing thing, time rather, that you will spend, I believe, will be the first two seconds after you die. Uh, there's a poem and it goes like this, church, loved ones will weep o'er my silent face. Dear ones will clasp me in sigh and sad embrace. Shadows and darkness will fill the place two seconds after you die. Faces the sorrow I will not see. Voices that murmur will not reach me. But where, oh where, will my spirit be two seconds after I die? Not to repair the good I lack, fixed to the goal of my chosen track. No room to repent, no turning back. Two seconds after I die. Made it forever with my chosen throne. Long is eternity, oh so long. Then woe is me if my soul be wrong. Two seconds after I die. Cloverland, members, visitors, where will you go? Where are you going to go two seconds after you die? What will happen, church, two seconds after you die on this morning? Well, my dear friend, you've come to the right place at the right time to serve the right God here at Cloverland. So don't turn us off because you're going to be blessed today. If you die outside the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to tell you this. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Two seconds after you die, you will be in Tartarus. What in the world, Brother Woods, is Tartarus? Oh, well, we'll get to that later. You'll be, rather, in the Hadean world. You'll be where the rich men currently reside. You say, I don't believe in hell, Brother Woods. You will, you will believe in hell after two seconds you die. You will. I, I, see, listen, I don't enjoy preaching about hell. I have to make myself preach on hell, church. So the Bible says I need to preach on the whole counsel of God. I don't want to preach on hell this morning. I don't like preaching on the subject of hell. But to be honest with the church, with, with a God who has called me, as the Bible that I say, uh, uh, and this Bible that I'm preaching from this morning, that I say I believe, and to be fair to those who hear, who hear me every Sunday, I must preach on the subject of hell. We've come to the day and the age in which hell has become a byword. It has slipped more and more into our entertainment media. It's nothing to, to hear those on television, you know I ain't lying today, use the word hell in, in a careless, flippant way. Uh, if you really wanted to criticize a preacher and make him see small and narrow and bigoted and uneducated and, and a fundamentalist, too much fun, too much damn, and, and not enough mental, you would say uh, he is what? A hellfire preacher. Isn't that right, church? He's one of those hellfire preachers like, like in the 50s and 60s on and so forth. Who do you think, church? is behind the idea of belittling, belittling the idea of hell. The devil himself is. Because see, the devil knows, church, that people who do not believe in hell, of course, are not going to seek a savior. Oh, let me help somebody, listen. So the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter four and verse four, the God, do you see that in your Bible? The God, what God? The God, G-O-D, lowercase g, the meaning the God of this age, who is the God of this age? The devil, have blinded the minds of them that believe not. And I've come to tell you today, my friend, I must tell you with all of the clarity that I can muster on this morning, uh, uh, there is a hell. And it makes no difference, ladies and gentlemen, if all of the scholars and, and all of these so-called theologians and scientists and artists and statesmen and politicians and musicians and all the teachers on this earth were to say there is no hell on this morning, that will not change the word of God. The Bible says in 1 Peter Chapter 1 and verse 25, the word of the Lord endureth sometime, no, forever. People have always, church, scoffed when the word of God comes to judgment. Do you know why they do that? 
The Bible says evil men understand not judgment. Are you evil this morning? That's the reason you don't understand judgment. I've said it often before and I believe that if the Supreme Court of the United States of America could vote on it, that they would outlaw hell as cruel and an, an unusual punishment. Men scoffed at Noah when God said he would destroy the world with a flood. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 7 and verse 22 that all in whose nostrils was the breath of life and all that was in the dry land died. And all of their mockery and, the, and their, uh, their, their protestations did not keep the flood from coming. Man also scoffed at Lot, didn't he? When God had warned Lot that he was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But the Bible clearly and plainly teaches in Genesis chapter 19, verses 24 and 25, then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from heaven. And the scoffing did not keep the brimstone and the fire from falling, did it? Men also scoffed at Daniel, the prophet Daniel, when Daniel warned that the Medes and the Persians was coming to overcome Babylon. But the Bible tells us in Daniel chapter 5 and verse 20, oh, I think it should be verse 30, it says this, In that night was Belazar, uh, the king of the Chaldeans, slain. You see, my dear friend, friend, listen, Scoffing and mocking and ridiculing does not take away, does not do away with the idea of hell. And I'm told that, that soldiers on the battlefield asked their chaplain, Chaplain, do you believe in hell? He said, I, I certainly do, but why did you ask? They said, uh, it's very simple with us. They said, if there is a hell and you don't believe in it, we certainly don't want you for a chaplain. And if there is no hell, we don't need any chaplain. You'll get it later in your call. My dear friend, I've come to tell you, there is a hell. Now, what is hell going to be like? Well, I want to take the word of God. Don't turn me off now. Don't turn me off. I want to take the word of God and tell you from the word of God what the Bible says that hell will be like. Now, when I read these scriptures, church, you're going to say to me, Darius, are these scriptures literal or are they figurative? Well, dear friend, listen, rather than arguing about where we're going to take them literally or figuratively, may I suggest to you this morning that we take them seriously. Oh, Cloverland visitors, you need to take what I say from the word of God seriously. Whatever it is that God is saying, I'm going to preach it just like God wrote it. And one day when I meet the Lord, I must rather him say, Darius, you took my word too literally. Than him to say, Darius, you explained away my word when you had no right to do so. Somebody ought to say amen. So I'm just going to preach it to you today. Exactly as I find it right here in the written word of God. What is this place, church? What is this place called hell? What's it, what is it going to be like? May I tell you, first of all, church is going to be, be a place of vow, vow associations. You think of the people who are going to go to hell. For example, take your Bible and turn with me to Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8. And here God gives a roll call of the damned, those people who are going to be in hell. And I want you to understand, I want you to realize, because I don't want you to not see if it may be you. I want to read this verse because there are many people who joke and laugh and they say, well, heaven for climate, but hell for company. That's what uh, I think Mark Twain used to, used to say and everybody got a laugh out of it. Well, who is going to be in the company in hell? The Bible says, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and homunkers and scorcerers and idolaters and all liars. Are oh, you a liar? He said, you're going to be in hell. Shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You have plenty of company, all right? And that is the company that you will be with. You say, well, I'm not as bad as these people that you've just mentioned. Well, dear friend, if you're not a believer, you, you are ahead of the list. Number one on that list I just mentioned is the fearful, and the unfearful rather, and the unbelieving. 
There is no greater sin, listen to me, than to aim the gun of unbelief at Christ on the cross and pull that trigger. Church, listen to me. He that believed not God hath made him a liar. There is no greater sin than to fail to love God. For, for the first and great commandment is, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy being. Don't tell me you're not a bad sinner if you don't love God on this morning and you don't trust him and you don't believe in him. My dear friend, if you refuse the Lord Jesus Christ, you will spend eternity in hell with all of these. And those of you who've been talking about hypocrites, I don't want to be to, to I don't want to be a member of the church because there are so many hypocrites. You know, that's the that's the saying you see on Facebook and everywhere on TV. Well, I've come to tell you, dear friend, I want to tell you you'll spend all eternity in every hypocrite that ever lived. If you refuse the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be right down there in this place called hell. Who will be there, church? Well, Satan will be there. Satan is not in hell yet, did you know that? But Satan will be in hell. He's going to be cast into hell on the last day. For Jesus said that hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell wasn't pre uh, prepared for you, but that doesn't stop you from going there. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 10. I want you to put your eyes on it, church. Look at it as well as gonna be on, on the screen. The Bible says this. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Church, Satan is not in hell yet. He's going to hell. And when he goes, he's going to get a one-way ticket. And when he arrives, he's not going to be the Lord of hell running around with a pitch pitchfork directing you down there telling you what to do, making people shovel coal and all that. You don't get that from the word of God. He's not the Lord of hell. Jesus Christ is the Lord of heaven, earth and hell and beneath. Did you know Jesus went to hell to preach uh, in 1 Peter chapter 3? Church, he is the Lord of lords and he came out of hell. When Satan goes down there, he won't have the access. He won't have the power to come out of hell. Christ is the Lord of lords. Christ is the king of kings. Who else will be there? Every demon spirit, it says for the, it was prepared for the devil and his angels. The angels that follow the devil are demons now. Every foul demon spirit will be there. Second Peter chapter two and verse four says, for God spare not that the angels, do you see that? That sin, did you know that angels sin? Well, yes, you know that because Satan sinned, but cast them down, where? To hell and deliver them in chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Church fallen angels that have become demon spirits will inhabit their way as well. It, it was not prepared for you, church. It was not prepared for you, visitors, but you can go. See, God doesn't want you to go there, though. Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. But if you join the devil's crew, you'll end up there today. You see, ungodly people are going to be there, the fearful and the unbelieving. But not only, uh, my dear friend, is, is hell going to be a place of vile associations? Contrary wise, therefore, hell will be a place of separation from all of the saints of all the ages. See, the Bible teaches, sir, that those who go to heaven are saved and those who go to hell are lost. And those who are saved are the ones that go to heaven. And so the Bible teaches in Luke chapter 13 and verse 28, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth and when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out. What does this mean, Brother Woods? That God is going to take the godly to heaven and you'll never see them again. Your, your godly mother who, who may have prayed for you, you, you'll never see her again. She'll go to heaven and you'll go to hell. You say, could my mother be happy in heaven, Brother Woods, if I'm in hell? Absolutely she will be happy. She will be in total bliss in heaven while you're in hell. 
she will be transformed into the perfect likeness of her Lord. He, he, his countenance will be burning with holiness and righteousness. And church, it will only seem right to her that you who spurned the Savior should go to hell. Your mother will pronounce a solemn curse upon your head uh, uh, as you sink into hell. Your little children who who pray for you will, will say it, it, it is natural and it is right that you who turn from God and refuse this salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ should go to hell. They will be in heaven. You yourself will be cast out according to Luke 13. That's what it says. What is hell going to be like church? It's a place of vile associations. What is hell going to be like? It is a place of separation of all that is right and good and beautiful. What will hell be like, preacher? Hell is going to be a place, my friend, of eternal darkness, of eternal darkness. Listen to the scriptures. Second Peter chapter two and verse four, the Bible says, for God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down, where? To hell, and now listen to this, church to be delivered into chains of what? Darkness. What a poignant phrase, Cloverland. Chains of darkness. Do you know what that means, church? Church, let me, hold on, well, stay with me right now. Do you see anything? It's just dark. It's chain, you're chained, Cloverland. You can't go anywhere. You're dark, you don't know what's around you, and, and you're gonna be chained to be reserved to judgment. The book of Jude, Cloverland, talked about the apostate who will go to hell, and it says of him, he's like a raging wave of the sea foaming at his own shame. Oh, I don't want you to go to hell today. Wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Church, the blackness of darkness forever. Again, listen to this verse in Matthew chapter 8 and verse 12. Jesus speaks of those who are going to hell in this text. And he says, they shall be cast into what? Outer darkness. Do you see that? Outer darkness. And there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Never again the luster of the moon. No matter how dark it gets, we always hope for the morning, don't we, church? Weeping may endure for a season, the Bible says, but joy cometh in the morning. It won't do that in hell, church. But my dear friend, I've come by to stop and tell you, there's never a morning, never a morning for those who are in hell. An evangelist friend of mine, Clover Land, uh, uh, said, told us the story of a young man about 14 or 15 years of age who lived in the community where he lived and he was raised by a wicked, uh, by a wicked and an ungodly daddy. And in church, this boy, was at the point of death, he was going to die. They didn't know anything about God, they didn't know anything about the Bible, and this boy did not know that the soul left the body at death and went into to Taurus or to paradise. And he was afraid, church, of the grave, and afraid of the darkness, and afraid of being put under the dirt. And he made his, uh, he made his, uh, his poor and ignorant daddy promised him, he said, Daddy, you, you promised me, promise me that you'll put a window on my grave so that the sun can come down and touch my body. And the father fashioned a window church that went right down to the casket so the sun, when it passed over the grave, would shine upon the casket. But my dear friend, when you die without Jesus Christ today, you will go to a place where no friend or foe can fashion a window that will let any light in on this morning. Hell, church, is a place of outer darkness. I'll tell you what else it is, my friend. My dear friend, hell is a place of eternal separation from God. Spiritual death, church, means separation. Jesus on the cross took our separation. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. And he was separated from God the Father. Mark chapter 15 and in verse 34, the Bible says that the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice. You know what he said? He said, Elohim, Elohim, Lama Shabbatana. 
Jesus cried, church, which being interpreted is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus Christ, Cloverland, ladies and gentlemen, visitors took your sin and my sin to Calvary. He became sin for us, him who knew no sin, and God had made to be sin for us. And when he took our sins upon himself, God the Father turned his back on him. He turned the back upon God the Son. And I can't understand to this day how could God forsake God. But at that moment, church, Jesus walked the burning corridors of the damned. Jesus baptized his soul in hell. And all of the sins of the world were distilled upon Jesus. What a burden, Cloverland. All of the eternity were compressed upon Jesus. And Jesus, being infinite, suffered in a finite period of time, which he being finite would suffer in an infinite period of time. And there, Jesus, God the Son, was separated from God the Father. And my dear friend, if you go to hell today, you will be separated eternally from God the Father and from God the Son and from God the Holy Spirit two seconds after death. Listen to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7 and following. And you, to you who are troubled, he says, rest with us. Who is the us? Apostles, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with, with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that, that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. There will be vengeance upon you if you don't believe. There will be vengeance upon you if you live like the world live. There will be vengeance on you two seconds after you die if you're without Christ. Who shall be separated with an everlasting separation? You, if you are without Christ. Dear, dear, dear death, my dear friend, is, a, is an annihilation. When you die, you don't cease to exist, but it is eternal separation. What is hell? Oh, I'll come to help you. What, is, what else is hell? Hell is a place of memory. When you die, Church, listen to me and listen to me good. You take your memory with you. There, Jesus told in Luke chapter 16 about a man who died, and he said in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. You remember the story? He asked from a drop of water, that's how hot it is, to cool his tongue. And Luke chapter 16 tells us, in verse 14, our Lord said, remember, 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 you carry your memory with you to hell, church. Did you know what you'll remember in hell? You'll remember this service today. When I told you to get your life right, you'll still be living like the same person you live after this service. You'll remember me standing here with this Bible at this pulpit and telling you to change your life for God. You'll remember me with this expression on my face I'm pleading with you, I'm begging you, I'm urging you to get your life right today. You heard the tone of my voice down there. You remember, church, that God put you in a beautiful church auditorium that, that even you can still worship with us today, virtually. God allowed you today to hear these songs. God had a preacher by the name of Darius Woods who stood there with the Bible in one hand and an outstretched hand toward you and told you to come to Jesus and, and tore his heart out and begged you, church today, and begged you to be saved. You remember that? That, 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 that? that will be the hell of hell. You'll carry your memory with you. What a shame it will be. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 2 tells us, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to everlasting contempt. Many in America uh, com every year commit suicide, church. And many of them are haunted by the ghosts of memory, trying to escape memories. But my dear friend, you will carry your memory with you to hell. And you listen to me and you listen to me good. Suicide never solves anything. It don't, 
You can go to hell committing suicide. It only makes matters worse, whatever they may be. Memories are in hell. And also, my friend, hell is a place of hopelessness. Hopelessness. It is a place of despair. Listen to the scripture in Revelation chapter 14, verses 10 and following. It says, our Lord is speaking of those who will go to hell. And he says, and the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he, listen to this, I would that every Jehovah Witness who is watching, if you have a Jehovah Witness in your family who does not believe in eternal punishment, would hear this right now. And he shall be tormented you see that with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb and the smoke of their torment ascended what up forever and ever and they will no, have no rest nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name and church and our group believe that hopeless is the saddest word in the english language when someone is sick we always hope that they can get well. I've been to the best side of people, church, at Cloverland, who were supposedly dying. And I never tell them that you're, they're going to die. I know they're going to die. They look sick, they look uh, withered away, because I don't know, I don't know if, if God can, will. he will, but I don't know if he will deliver them at the time. And, and church, you, you may be watching me this morning, uh, uh, with with, with a ma malignancy in, in your body and some greedy malady that's eating away at you right now and the doctor may be saying to you right now prepare to die a and you can't live he may be telling you that right now but my dear friend he doesn't know everything that doctor doesn't know everything. he doesn't know everything thank God for physicians though but there are their art is limited but God says, I am the Lord thy God who healeth all thy diseases. It's no harder for God to heal a cancer than it is a head cold. And my dear friend, you, you can be sick and it won't be hopeless. Your business can be in shambles, but, but it's not necessarily hopeless. But my dear friend, when you go to hell, it is hopeless. There's no way out. That is it. Try to get your life right and let's go home. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 7, when a wicked man dieth, his expectation shall perish and the hope of an unjust man perisheth. There is no hope, church, to the wicked man. And then seventhly, hell is a place of burning. I left that uh, last on purpose, church, because when people talk about hell so many times, they laugh at the idea. They mock at the idea and scoff at the idea of hell being a place of burning. But my dear friend, may I tell you again that Jesus Christ, who was infinite in love and more to say about hell, he had, any, he had more to say about hell than any other preacher or prophet uh, in the word of God. And to say that a man is a hellfire preacher is to say that he is like Jesus. I'd rather be like Jesus because he preached more on hell than any other subject. Listen to these words from the lips of an infinite love, the Lord Jesus. Matthew, Matthew chapter 25 and verse 41. The Bible says, then shall he say unto them on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. Listen to what the Lord Jesus said in, in, uh, in Mark chapter 9 and verse 43. And he says, if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Over 70 texts. Did you know this church? Over 70 texts in the New Testament deal with hell and hell fire. The majority of them, Cloverland, or most of them uttered by who? Jesus the Christ. What is Jesus saying when he said, if your right hand offend you, cut it off? Or it, it, it will be better for you to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell. He's not saying that you can be saved by cutting off your hand. He's just trying to warn us of the horrors of hell. And he's saying it will be better to be a crippled saint on your way to heaven than a healthy sinner on your way to hell. That's what he's saying to you and I today. Now, my dear friend, I'm just giving you a few verses telling you what's, what God's word has to say about hell. 
All right. Now uh, you say, well, God must be cruel. No, God is not cruel. God doesn't want you to go to hell. As I told you earlier, the Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Second Peter chapter three, verse nine. God moved by the Spirit to click on our YouTube. You, uh, moved you by the Spirit to you to click on our YouTube channel and watch us on Facebook Live, and that you might be warned. God has put the Holy Spirit in your heart to say, "Don't go to hell." God has given you this Bible uh, to, to you to say, don't go to hell. God has put the prayers of this church and the prayer of your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your friends, and your neighbors to say, don't go to hell. God has put this church, Cloverland Church of Christ, and other churches in the land to say, God doesn't want you and I to go to hell. Our Father has raised up the bloodstained cross of the Lord Jesus Christ and said, if you go to hell, you have to call over the bruised, bleeding, broken body to go to hell of Christ. I don't want you to go to hell. The Lord is not willing that any should perish today. So my friend, if you die right now, outside of Christ, I must say with a broken heart that you'll go to hell. But now, suppose you're saved today. Oh, that was hard for me to say that. Suppose today, church, as a child of God, with only a step between you and death, as Solomon, as Sam, 1 Samuel said, you, you close your eyes in this world and what's going to happen when you wake up? Two seconds after death, you'll go to heaven if you're on the right side of life. You say that's simplistic. Well, it's glorious is what I want to call it. It's glorious, Cloverland. Heaven is not a state of mind, my friend. Heaven is a real place, more real than Houston, Texas, more real than London, Tokyo, or Baghdad is the place called heaven. Heaven is so real, Cloverland. It is a place on God's map. Jesus Christ said in John chapter 14, I go, it's a place, and prepare a place for you. I'm one of those who believe in such a literal hell. I believe that right now it has a geographic location. Jesus Christ is there in a resurrected body. It is a real place, Cloverland. Start living right, come to church, a real place as real as Houston, Texas. I believe, Cloverland, I know that, that, that direction it is in. I believe that heaven is somewhere in the north. I believe that. I, if you've been in this church for a while, you've heard me say that before. And I want to tell you why I believe heaven is in the north. The Bible always speaks of heaven as being up. Up, I mean. Well, they say, well, those ignoramuses, uh, uh, ignoramuses they believe that heaven is up, but, but, but up is the way if you live in the United States church. But up is the way if you live in Australia. So which way is up, brother, uh, brother preacher? Well, my dear friend, there is one place that's always up, no matter where you are, and that's north. It is not by incidence of, uh or -oh, happenstance that people talk about up north or being up north. Do you know that our entire universe re 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 revolves around the North Star? If you were to go out at night and, and then point a camera toward the North Star and, and keep the lens open, the, the North Star will, will stay steady, but it will seem as hell all the, uh, as, as all the other stars would revolve around this North Star. Did you know that Lucifer evidently believed that the abode of God was in the North? Listen to Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 12 and following. Look what the Bible says. It says, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did speak, squeak in the nation? For thou hast said in my heart, I will ascend unto heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. Then listen to this church. Listen to it now. In the size of what? Of the north. 
When Lucifer said, church, I'm going to exert or exalt myself above the throne of God, the stars of God. He said somewhere there uh, in the sides of the north is where I want to be. Very interesting thing. Listen to me, church, don't miss this. When God gave Moses instruction as to how to make the animal sacrifice, he told him how to kill a sacrifice. And then he told him how to pour out the blood. And he said in Leviticus chapter one and verse seven, uh, verse 11, I'm sorry. He said, pour out the blood on the north side of the altar toward what? The Lord. On the north side, Cloverland, of the altar toward the Lord. Take your Bible and turn to Psalm 75. And let me show you something here. I want to read verses six and seven. It said, for promotion cometh not from the east. Which way is east here? Uh, I think it's uh, uh, this way, right? Amen. Now, nor from the west, that's that this way, church. No, nor from the south, that's going down. Am I right about it? That's this way. But God is the judge. Which direction did he leave out? He left out the north, didn't he? Where God is, Cloverland. It doesn't come from that way. It doesn't come from that way. It doesn't come from that way. It comes from this way. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God on the sides of the north. Pour out the blood of the altar toward northward, toward the Lord. All I'm trying to say is, dear friends, somewhere out there, is a place called heaven. That is a real place. You need to start living like it, not just a state of mind. You say, Brother Woods, I don't, don't, don't I have to wait till the resurrection, therefore, to go there? Oh, no. You can go there in a body, or you can go there out of a body. Oh, let me help somebody. It makes no difference. There are people there in their bodies, and there are people there without their bodies. Did you know that? Resurrected bodies are there. Our Lord's body is a resurrected body. Elijah and e Enoch went to heaven being translated. Their bodies are no longer here upon this earth. Listen to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. The apostle Paul is giving his testimony of a vision he had, of heaven that he had. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning in verse two, he said, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Now, the man he's talking is, is himself. And he said, church, I knew this man in Christ above 14 years ago. Watch this, rather in body, I cannot tell, or out of the body, I cannot tell. All he's saying is, I had an experience, whether it was out of my body, or whether it was in my body, I don't know. I knew I was in heaven. I don't know how I got there, but such a one caught up into the third heaven. I want you to hear what he's saying, Cloverland. He's saying 14 years ago, I went to heaven. That's what he's saying. And when I went to heaven, I was caught up to heaven. He said, I don't know whether I was in my body or out of my body, which tells me, church, that you can go to heaven in your body or you can go to heaven out of your body. And I'm going to talk to you more about that just in a moment. And you say, well, how can people be in, in body and in, uh, in the spirit at the same time in one place? Well, Jesus is here today, am I right? In spirit. And we're here in body. And uh, I can be there in heaven, in spirit, and I, he'll be there in body. Let uh, me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me get, make it clear. You see, my dear friend, whether in the body or out of the body, it makes no difference. And he says, uh, such a one was caught up into what? Paradise. The third heaven that he that he equates with paradise. Remember Jesus saying to the dying thief, this day thou shalt be with me. What? In paradise, not in heaven. When you die, you don't go to heaven. I don't know why many people believe that, but you will be in the Hadean world waiting for the judgment day to come out of the Hadean world to go to your second death or to heaven. And he said, there I heard unspeakable words, not uh, lawful for a man to utter. And God took him to heaven. God showed him all the glories of heaven. And then he said, Paul, you can't tell anybody what you've seen. 
I'll tell you from that time up until that time, the apostle Paul was wanting to stay and willing to go to heaven. After that time, he was only willing to stay and, and wanting to go to heaven. He said, I have a desire. You remember that scripture? To depart and be with Christ, which is far better. And the word for better church means very, very, very much better. Church, heaven is better. I have a desire to, to depart and be with Christ. You say, he's, he says the third heaven, Brother Woods. And, uh, are there three heavens? Yes, the first heaven is the atmosphere. The Bible speaks of the atmosphere in Genesis of the files of the heavens. That's the air. All right. The second heaven is the stellar heaven. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. The third heaven is the abode of God. Someone has beautifully said the first heaven we see by day. The second heaven we see by night. The third heaven we see by faith. I love that Cloverland. I really do. Put that on Facebook. And my dear friend, the Apostle Paul in a body or out of a body, he said, I don't know. I just went to heaven and there I saw things that no one could tell. So that doesn't bother me, church. If you ask me after this message this morning, Darius, tell me some things about heaven. And I'll say, I don't know. And you'll say, well, you're supposed to know. No, I'm not supposed to know. I don't have to know. And you don't have to know. Well, someone said a man doesn't show his ignorance by not knowing so much as he does by knowing so much that ain't so. And my dear friend, you don't have to know everything about heaven today. There are things that God has just kept from you and I. Why, if we knew everything about heaven, church, we wouldn't like both ways when we cross the street. I mean, we'll, we, we'd be so anxious to get there. Heaven is so wonderful, my dear friend, that God had, has purposely kept things about heaven from us so we can anticipate and that we can live right on this life to get there. Now, if you died this morning, would you go immediately to heaven or in your spirit? Of course, there are some people who erroneously teach that uh, the soul sleeps with the body until the resurrection. No, that is false doctrine. It is only the body that sleeps, not the soul. There is no such thing as soul sleep. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Listen to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 6 and following. The apostle Paul says, therefore we are always confident. Knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Not a one of us has literally seen Jesus, but he says we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So when a Christian dies, he just moves out of his body, church, right into the presence of the Lord this instant. I think the best illustration church I know of that is when Stephen, who was being stoned, saw the Lord Jesus. You remember the story in Acts 7? And the Bible tells about Stephen having a vision of the Lord Jesus Christ just before he stepped over into glory. And in Acts chapter 7 and verse 56, Stephen, who was being stoned, said, behold, he said, I, I, I see uh, the heavens open. He's seen it, church. And the Son of Man standing right there and welcoming. On the right hand of God, he had a glimpse into the glory before he died, church. Oh, my dear friend, listen to me today. When a child of God dies, he goes immediately into the presence of God. Jesus told a dying thief, this day, he didn't say until I come back. He said, this day thou shalt be with who? Me, where? In paradise. No waiting, no soul sleep. Goodbye here, hello there. Five seconds, two seconds after you die. You say, well, will we know our loved ones there, uh, uh, preacher? Of course we will. You remember reading about King David? I'm almost done, stay with me who had the little boy that died and David and, uh, and David had stained heaven and David said, oh God, spare the life of my baby after he committed that sin. Please, Lord, he told him. But God took him, took the baby. David got up and washed, anointed his head 
took food, they said, we don't understand it, the people said. While the baby was alive, you were fasting and praying and weeping, and now the baby is gone, and you wash and anoint your head and eat. Why? He said, why should I fast? I cannot bring him back to me, but he said, I will go to who? Him. Of course, we'll know one another in heaven. The Bible, the Bible teaches we'll know, we'll know as we're known. You don't really know me. You say, I know you, preacher. No, you, you know what I let you see, church. And I know what you let me see. But won't it be so, but won't it be so wonderful, Global Land, when we'll know each other transparently? With all of this sin gone, we'll be transformed in the likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Moses and Elijah appeared with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. There needed no introductions. Moses was Moses, Elijah was Elijah. I wonder how Peter knew how they looked because he recognized them and called them by name. He wasn't living during the times of Moses and Elijah, was he? Did he, call, did he have called Im images of them in the temple? When he, and when I get to heaven, listen, I'll still be Darius and you'll be you and we'll have a big time up there. Yes, we'll know one another. And, and what are we going to do in heaven? Well. We're not going to just sit around a white cloud, church, wearing a holy robe and, and plucking a harp. We're going to serve the Lord. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 15 says, Therefore they, they before the throne of God and serve him, what? Day and night in his temple. The greatest joy, Cloverland, I have on this earth is serving the Lord. I enjoy preaching the word of God. I enjoy winning souls. I enjoy Bible study. I enjoy praising the Lord. Oh, how we're going to praise him when in heaven with all of the shackles and all the foibles and the failures and the inadequacies shrieved away from us. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 11 speaks of the music in heaven. It speaks of the, the choir. And we're told that the choir will have 100 million voices. You imagine that kind of music, black, white, brown, all from all across the globe, from heaven. Guess who the best singer will be? That's biblical. That the last will be first. I will be ahead of you in this one, church. That's, that's biblical, amen. We're going to serve the Lord. We're going to sing and praise and I don't know what we're going to do maybe he'll give us a new universe we're going to rule angels we're going to judge for our Lord you say give me the details preacher will will we sleep will we eat how much will we wait what age will we be I don't know and you don't know Cloverland but Revelation chapter 21 tells us in verse 4 it tells us this much though and God shall wipe away all tears from your eyes and there shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, neither shall be there no more pain, for the former things are passed away. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. No sin, no sorrow, no suffering, no disease, no doubt. Heaven will be the presence of all that is good, the absence of all that is bad. Heaven will be all that the loving heart of God can conceive and the omnipotent of God can prepare. And he that spared not his own son, he shall not also with him freely give us all things. And who is going to heaven, church? The apostle John had a vision, didn't he? And of those saints that came through the great tribulation, those tribulation saints. And he said in Revelation chapter 7 and verse 14, he said, These are they which have come out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of Lamb. John saw these in heaven, church. These are they who have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. These are those who have been saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus. Heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. God doesn't want you to go to hell today. God wants you to go to heaven. You walk into a, a floor shop and you see a beautiful, uh, or you see a jofo come up as it will in a day or a week or so in your backyard. And may I tell you that, that every flower you see ought to remind you of Jesus. Sharon's fairest rose. 
Jesus, the lily of the valley, that died that you might not go to hell. You look on the ground and see a stone lying there, and every stone that you see ought to remind you of, the, of Jesus, the rock of ages, the sure foundation stone that God sent to keep you from going to hell. Every time you see a river cloverland, it ought to remind you of God's love in motion. Every time you see a mountain, it ought to remind you of God's love piled high. Every time you see a star in the sky, it ought to remind you of God's love in diamonds. Oh, my dear friend, I come to tell you, God loves you today and he doesn't want you to go to hell. That's a parable. And with this, I'm finished. Listen to me. A man came, church, and stood by the gate of heaven and, uh, and watched those who were trying to get in Cloverland. And one came and knocked at the pearly gate and the voice on the inside said, who is it that seeks entrance into heaven? And what is the password? And he said, I am a moral man. The voice within said, what is the password? He said, honesty and decency. And the voice from within said, depart from me. I never knew you. Another came and knocked on the pearly gate. And the voice from within said, who is it that seeks entrance into heaven? And what is the password? This man said, I am a religious man. And the voice said, what is the password? He said, church membership and baptism and attendance. And the voice within said, depart from me. I never knew you, you who work in iniquity. Another came, Cloverland, and knocked at heaven's gate. The voice within said, who is it that seeks entrance into heaven? And what is the password? He said, I am a humanitarian. He said, what is the password into heaven? He said, service and love and good deeds. And the voice from heaven within said, depart from me, ye that work in iniquity. I never knew you. And finally, Cloverland, one knocked at the gate of heaven. The voice said, who is it that seeks entrance into heaven? And what is the password? That one standing in the gate said, in my hand, no price I bring. Simply to the cross, I cling. Oh, church, I'm pleading you right now to cling to, to Christ, to cling to the word of God, to cling to the church that Christ died for. Clean, the voice within said, open the wide gate and let him in. That's what we all want to hear. For, all, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Oh, I'm brought to tears. Church, listen, two seconds after death, where will you go? Let's pray. How many are watching me today? Could say to me, Brother Woods, I know if I died right now and you were to ask, where, oh, where will my spirit be? Two seconds after I, you die. I know by God's grace, hallelujah, that I will be in heaven. Can you say that this morning? This morning is your night, is your day of decision. As I have told you, if you refuse the Lord Jesus Christ, you will remember the service. It will only increase your judgment. But if you receive the Lord Jesus, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as, shall be as wool. Oh, this morning, God will forgive you and God will cleanse you in every stain, every spot, every blur, every blemish will be completely taken away. Nothing written against your name. Your name will be inscribed in the Lamb books of life and God will save you today. And the God who saved you is the God who will keep you. And if you only receive him by faith, obedience, faith. Father, I pray this morning that many today will say yes to Christ. In his name I pray. Amen. You got to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You got to repent. You got to confess. You got to be baptized for the remission of your sins. To re receive the Holy Spirit and to remain faithful. Revelation 2.10 until Christ calls you home and you will receive the crown of life, two seconds after death, where will you be? Thank you for this message. Thank you for joining us on this morning. We hope and pray that you're encouraged to live for God rather than the world. If there's anything we can do, don't hesitate to contact us. Call us, email us. We would love to hear from you. We would love to pray with you if there's something you're struggling with. Right now, let's serve God with the gladness of heart, church. Thank you, visitors, for joining us. God bless you. We love you. See you next time.
worship which is known as communing we find in Acts 20 and verse 7 where Paul writes upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread Paul preached unto them raging upon the morrow we also have another example in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 and follows and Paul writes for I have received of the Lord what I also pass unto you the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a New Testament in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drink the cup of the Lord is an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord let a man examine himself before he eat the bread and drink of the cup for anyone who eats the eats and drink without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drink judgment unto himself that's why many among you are weak and sick and a number of you have fallen asleep shall we pray Heavenly Father, once again, we come to you with bowed heads and humble hearts. Thank you for the many blessings you've bestowed upon us. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be on this time side of life. Father, we just ask you, thank you for this bread that represents thy son's broken body and the cup which represents thy son's shed blood. We pray that we take it with pure and clean hearts and our minds will not forget the meaning of it. In your son Jesus' name, we do humbly pray. Amen. Another part of our worship, which is known as the offering, we have an example found in 1 Corinthians, the 16th chapter, verses 1 and 2, where Paul also writes, Now concerning the collection for the saints that I have given us to the church of Galatia, even so do ye, upon the first day of the week, that every one of you lay by him in store, as God has promised him, that there be no gathering 
when I come. We also have an example in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, where Paul also writes, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generally, generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loveth a cheerful giver. You may give at this time or come back to the building and drop up your, drop up your offering. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, once again, we come to you with bowed heads, humble hearts. Thank you for the many blessings you bestowed upon us. For we thank you for allowing us to come again to worship you in spirit and in truth. For we pray that this offering be used in the manner of keeping our kingdom. For we pray for those who had the desire to give but had not, that you may restore them to give at the next appointed time. In your son Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. <laughs> 